The movie's opening sequence depicts a security guard who nervously removes the screws from the vents using only his hands. He becomes frightened upon hearing someone banging on the barricaded door. Eventually, he opens the vents and crawls through them. As he emerges from the vents, he hastily exits the room, unaware of a looming, shadowy figure that resembles a large bear. While attempting to open the door, the guard hears a mysterious humming sound behind him, causing him to panic. Something approaches him from the reader. Subsequently, the guard finds himself restrained in a chair, and his terrifying screams are the last sounds heard before a mechanical bear mast is placed on him, resulting in his demise. Meanwhile, Malcott Mike Schmidt enjoys an ice cream when he spots a lone boy standing nearby. Mike kept looking over the boy when he saw a man approach the boy, taking the ladder somewhere else. Mike, assuming that the man was a kidnapper, ran after them and tackled the man into the fountain, beating him up senseless. Mike's co-worker pulled him away from the man and Mike then realized that the man was actually the kid's father. After what happened, Mike visited a career counselor named Steve Raglan to ask for help, but the latter rejected him as Mike had a record of getting fired for various reasons, like insubordination. But when Steve read Mike's full name, he seemed to have realized something and decided to offer Mike a job as a night guard at an abandoned diner called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Mike rejected the job offer as he couldn't do night shifts because of his younger sister, Abby. Still, Steve handed his call card to Mike just in case he changed his mind. Mike went back home and Max, Abby's babysitter, left once he arrived. Mike checked on Abby in her room and found her drawing again. When he asked about the drawing, Abby answered that the characters in her drawing are her friends. Mike retired to his room to rest. While he slept, he had a dream about a past event. In this dream, he recalled the distressing memory of his younger brother, Garrett, being abducted by an unknown man. A young Mike desperately pursued the vehicle, and in a later scene, an older Mike could be seen shouting his brother's name as the car vanished from view. The following day, Mike arranged to meet with Dr. Lillian and his conniving aunt Jane, who was plotting to gain custody of Abby in an attempt to receive child support payments. After Jane departed, Dr. Lillian assured Mike that Abby would be better off under his care rather than his aunt's and advised him to secure a new job promptly to prevent Abby from being taken away. Acting on Dr. Lillian's counsel, Mike reached out to Steve Raglan and accepted the job offer that had been extended to him. On his first night of work, Mike was in control and was sleeping, dreaming of his brother's disappearance once again. But in this dream, Mike turned to see five children standing still and staring at him. He asked the children if they saw the man who took his brother, but the children didn't answer. Instead, they suddenly ran off and Mike chased after the blonde boy only to trip and get abruptly woken up. The next day, Jane was talking to Max and her brother Jeff. Max had been spying on Mike to find anything they could use against him so Jane could get Abby, but she never found anything useful. And Jeff suggested trashing Mike's workplace so the latter could lose his job. On Mike's second night of work, Mike was sleeping and dreaming again. This time, Mike was chasing another child when said child attacked him with a hook, making a cut on his arm. When Mike turned to check on the child, the young one suddenly let out a terrifying scream and dark ink oozed from their eyes. Mike was jolted awake by the erratic behavior of the electricity. He headed towards the power generator. Once the electrical issue had been resolved, a female police officer named Vanessa Shelley paid a visit to the diner, a place she frequented. Vanessa noticed a cut on Mike's arm and kindly assisted him in tending to the wound. During their conversation, Vanessa brought up the fact that security positions at Freddy's had high turnover rate due to both the meager pay and the notorious history of children disappearing at Freddy's in the 1980s, leading to the establishment's closure. Following Mike's shift the following day, a group of troublemakers, including Jeff and his friends Carl and Hank, infiltrated the premises and wreaked havoc, causing extensive damage. Carl was in the kitchen where he was murdered by the animatronic mascots Chica the Chicken and Mr. Cupcake. Hank saw what was happening and ran away, going into a storage room where Bonnie the rabbit killed him. Jeff, who saw Hank running away through the CCTV camera, went to check what was happening and tried to escape as soon as he saw Bonnie. His demise was inevitable as he got cornered by Foxy the pirate. Max, who was the group's designated driver, had been waiting outside for a while and decided to look for Jeff and his friends. Inside the diner, she saw a kid and followed him into the room where the mascots were created. Inquisitive Max approached the Golden Freddy mascot, only to be met with a horrifying surprise as a hand emerged from Golden Freddy's mouth, snatching Max and ending her life. Vanessa visited Mike's home to inform him that there had been a break-in at Freddy's and showed him the sleeping pills he had left in the control room. 
Mike explained to Vanessa that he had been using the sleeping pills to induce dreams about the traumatic incident involving Garrett, hoping to recollect the face of the man responsible for his brother's disappearance. He knew that he had glimpsed the man's face in his dreams, but those memories were deeply buried, and he had been striving to recall them through his dreams. On his third night of work, Mike brought Abby with him to Freddy's since he couldn't reach Max. Abby set up a port while Mike attended to his duties. After completing his cleaning tasks, Mike took a sleeping pill and had a dream featuring the blonde boy. He engaged the boy in conversation, offering to provide what the boy desired in exchange for information. However, Mike briefly looked away upon hearing the girl scream, and when he turned back, the boy had vanished, leaving behind a drawing of a mascot on the ground. Mike awoke and realized that Abby was no longer in the port. He heard Abby's cries and rushed to find her playing with the animatronic mascots. Mike was spooked when he realized that the mascots were moving on their own, but didn't do anything that might push the mascots to attack them. Before they left, Abby handed Bonnie her drawing of a heart and hugged Golden Freddy. When they got back home, Mike saw Abby's previous drawings and realized that Abby had drawn children that had similarities with the mascots. He then saw a drawing of when Garrett got taken and when he asked Abby about it, she answered that the blonde boy told her about it. Mike asked about the driver and Abby answered that the only thing a blonde boy told her was a yellow rabbit. On his fourth night of work, Mike brought Abby again with him and they saw Vanessa's police car. Mike learned that Vanessa had already known that a group of children had possessed the mascots. Abby proposed the idea of creating a large portal that could accommodate all of them and with the assistance of the animatronic mascots, they implemented her suggestion. Mike and Vanessa entrusted Abby to the care of the mascots while they went to procure a roof for their portal. During this time, Mike queried Vanessa about her knowledge of the diner. Instead of responding, Vanessa inquired why Mike had once again brought Abby with him. Mike elucidated that he believed the children inhabiting the mascots possessed crucial information about Garrett's abductor. While at Freddy's, he felt that his dreams were more vivid, allowing him to potentially alter the events surrounding Garrett's disappearance. As they conversed, Vanessa observed Abby approaching Bonnie on the stage, attempting to prevent her from touching Bonnie's guitar. However, it was too late as the guitar abruptly exploded. After Abby regained consciousness, Vanessa issued a stern warning to Mike, insisting that he must never bring Abby back to the diner or she would resort to drastic measures. The following day, Mike arranged for Jane to look after Abby while he went to work. During his shift, he experienced another dream, one with notably different circumstances. He saw his family with Garrett and the blonde boy told him that he can dream about this happy moment every night just as long as he gives Abby to them. Mike mindlessly agreed, but when he caressed Garrett's face he realized his mistake and decided to take it back. Suddenly the children came running towards him, attacking him. When he woke up he was strapped to a chair and a mechanical mask was about to be put on his face. He escaped from the chair and backed away, only to find Max at head and the other's dead bodies. Mike tried to escape, but he heard humming from behind him and screamed in fear. He lost consciousness, and when he woke up, he realized that he had been taken to a police outpost by Vanessa, who found him badly injured and unconscious in the diner. Mike discovered that not only were the spirits of the children inside the mascots, but their physical bodies were also present. These children had fallen victim to a man who had the unsettling ability to manipulate the amnesiac ghost children who had no recollection of their past. Vanessa shared a photograph with Mike, showing a yellow rabbit and a young girl, unveiling that the yellow rabbit was none other than William Afton and he happened to be her father. In the meantime, Golden Freddy made his way to Mike's residence and tragically took Jane's life to take Abby, who willingly accompanied him due to the trust she placed in him. Mike covertly entered the diner to rescue Abby and observed her being led elsewhere. Without being noticed by Golden Freddy and Bonnie, Mike poured water on a stage and employed a taser on the wet floor causing the two mascots to malfunction. Mike pursued Chica and Abby, using the taser on Chica. The siblings attempted to flee, but Mr. Cupcake ensnared Mike's leg. Mike urged Abby to escape while he grappled with Mr. Cupcake. Abby found herself pursued by Foxy. She sought refuge under the ball pool, where Vanessa electrocuted Foxy, incapacitating him. Mike, on the other hand, followed Abby only to be met by the Yellow Rabbit. Unmatched by the Yellow Rabbit's strength, Mike was knocked down. Yellow Rabbit approached Mike with a knife, ready to kill him, but Vanessa came and stopped him from doing so. The Yellow Rabbit took off his mask, revealing Steve Raglan, who turned out to be William Afton. As Vanessa confronted her own father, Mike woke up and instructed Abby to illustrate the true events involving the ghost children, hoping to help them identify the real wrongdoer. Abby followed Mike's guidance, and when William noticed her, he released his hold on Vanessa to reach Abby.
Vanessa intervened again, but she ended up getting stabbed by her deranged father. Meanwhile, when Abby completed her drawing, the light focused on the paper. On the paper, the ghost children witnessed a depiction of the yellow rabbit, committing acts of violence against children, only to realize that these children were their past selves. This revelation prompted them to turn against William. The ghost children took control of William's animatronic suit and watched him endure his own suffering. While Abby, Mike, and Vanessa made their escape from the diner, the ghost children were seen forcibly dragging the severely injured William away. Subsequently, Vanessa was hospitalized and remained unconscious. Dr. Lillian noted that Abby appeared to be significantly more spirited and commended Mike. During a meal together, Abby expressed her concern for the ghost children, who now lacked someone to care for them. Meanwhile, William was seen whimpering in pain inside a room in the diner. He weakly reached out to the blonde boy who had been watching him from the door. Without saying anything, the blonde boy slowly closed the door. 